wonderful. Look at somebody and tell the person you look wonderful. Give somebody a high five and say you look wonderful. Let it come from your heart. Eh? Let it come from your heart. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, let's take our seed as we go into the word of God. Are we ready? All right. For those of you uh, connecting with us online, watching either through Facebook, YouTube, or our TV, Overcomer's Voice, this is Pastor Jide, bringing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom directly into the comfort of your home uh, through whatever means YouTube, Facebook, or through your favorite TV station, Overcomer's, I mean, um, F Living, I was going to say Overcomer's Voice. Maybe one day we'll have our own TV station. Can I hear amen? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Today I want to speak to us um, in the next 25, 26 minutes about what I've called Bible faith is what confers your dominion. Bible faith confers your dominion. We've explained Bible faith. Bible faith is raw faith. Bible faith is taking God's word as it is. Bible faith is believing that God meant what he says, and God only says what he meant. Bible faith is as if God is telling you the truth, and God is the truth. And I've told you that the truth is what you and I or anyone here on earth measure every activity, every event of our lives with. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, 1 Timothy in chapter 6, verse 12, the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Everybody say fight. Fight the good fight of faith. And then he said, lay hold unto eternal life because you are called to eternal life. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. I repeated the word fight there several times because I want you to understand that even though throughout the month of February, we've talked about spiritual battle. We've explained to you that you are in a warfare. Either you like it or not, you are in a battle of life. Either you believe it or not, you are in a battle of life. Either you realize it or not, you are in a battle of life. And there is nothing you can do to live above circumstances if you are not going to fight for your life. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, Jesus himself put it this way. He says, the kingdom of God suffered violence from the day John the Baptist was born. What Jesus is saying is that the devil know that the beginning of John the Baptist is the liberation of humanity. So he said, from that day, the kingdom of God has gone into frenzy. The kingdom of, I mean, the kingdom of Satan has gone into frenzy. It's, it's, it's just fighting to destroy, to kill, and to steal. So without a good fight, you may never possess. Without a good fight, you may never possess whatever God has in store for you. If you don't know how to fight, if you don't fight, fight spiritually. We're not talking of physical fight. Fight spiritually. Fight on your knee. Fight in prayer and by faith. You may never possess whatever God has in store for you. So this is important that until faith force is engaged, until faith force in your life is engaged, you don't possess anything from God. Are you listening to me? Until faith force is engaged, without faith it is important possible to receive anything from God. Until you engage your faith force, you can't receive anything from God the Father. Until you engage faith fight, you cannot win the battle over your destiny, your children, your family, your, the sickness in your body, your career. Until you engage yourself, supernatural faith, Bible faith is the key that confers dominion in your life and in my life. In John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, the Bible says here, For whosoever is born again, whosoever is born of God, 
overcomes the world. So this is not something that uh, uh, you have to do. God says if you are born again, you have overcome. Not you will overcome. Not you are going to overcome. Not you may overcome. Whosoever is born of God, overcome. King James says overcome it, which means it's a continuous thing. You continue to dominate the arena of Satan because you are a child of God. This is the victory that overcomes the world. What is it? Our faith. So you live by faith. You walk by faith. You talk by faith. You think by faith. You minister by faith. You by faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the war, and it doesn't just come from the natural. It comes because you are a spirit being until you feed your faith with the supernatural food. You cannot experience the natural reality. Until you feed your faith with the supernatural food, it is impossible to fight spiritual battle and win. Because you don't fight spiritual battle in the natural. You fight spiritual battle with in the spiritual. This is why it is vital key to winning every battle, every challenge, every situation or circumstances of life that confronts you. If you want to live above sickness, you need violent faith. You need to take the word of God and you need to hold on to the word of God and say, thus says the Lord. And believe it. And believe it. If you want to leave sickness, you got to not, uh, you know, you've got, you don't talk it. You don't think it. You don't see it as relevant to you. Because God must be true. And all men must be liars. It doesn't mean that that sickness will not knock your door. It just means that your subconsciousness, look at that sickness, it's you again. Have you not heard? Have you not? You know, you, your faith takes you into a place that you look at devil as if it doesn't exist. It takes faith. It takes Bible faith. Because the devil will make everything in your life larger than God. It will bring you in a situation where it will make you to lose. Have you not heard? I've told you many times, and probably you have read it in some books, or those of you who read books, that if you mix faith and logic, you're going to be defeated. Faith is not logical. It, it's not. It doesn't, no matter how you think, no matter how eloquent, educated, intellectual, psych academical, whatever call you are, you cannot mix it with faith. Faith is so silly. And yet God say, the Bible says God used a silly thing to confound the wise man, the wise people. So you've got to understand that faith doesn't mean that people must understand you. Doesn't mean so. Bible faith is what confers dominion, and your dominion begins from today in Jesus' name. It takes Bible violent faith, and as you feed that faith and nourish it to an extent, whatever the devil throws at you will bounce on that faith. It doesn't mean that the devil will not throw stuff, it just means that you're standing on the faith. And when you stand on the faith, the Bible says, The just shall live. By their own faith. Habakkuk chapter 2. So it's important for us to know that Bible faith confers dominion. Bible faith does what? Confers dominion. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12 verse, verse 3 that we all have a measure of faith. So we, we can't say I don't have faith. And I've said this many times. Nobody can say I don't have faith. If you say you don't have faith, it's, you are not born again. Because how did you get born again in the first place? Uh, you know, pastor, I just don't have faith. It means you need to be born again. Because you were born again by faith. So the fact that you are born again, you have faith. Paul said, we all have a measure. God has deposited a measure of faith in our life. He further reveals to us in verse 17 of Romans chapter 10 that this faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of faith, or the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes, faith comes, faith is not static. Faith comes by hearing, 
you hear the word, you receive the word, you believe the word, irrespective of what you are, you just receive the word in your heart, and then you let your heart understand it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. I will explain the second hearing to us as we go along in this, in this service. Until we recognize that, that, that faith is, comes by hearing, number one. And number two, the house of, of building your faith. Because even though the faith comes, you still have to build it. Amen? You still have to nurture it. You still have to develop it. Because a measure of faith might not work when you need that amount of faith. So you've got to know how to build your faith and take concrete actions, decisive, purposeful, deliberate actions to build your faith. Faith will not be built in you by anybody. You, God, will not build your faith. Your wife, your husband will not build your faith. Your brother, your pastor will not build your faith. You have to take concrete, decisive, personal decision to build your faith. And it is the faith that builds that overcomes the world. How do I build my faith for spiritual success or for spiritual battle? It is important for you to know that, and I'm going to stress this again, whether you know it or not, you are in a battle. Whether you believe it or not, you are in a battle. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you say. Jesus said so. Now, whether you are ready or not, you are in a battle. So you, get, you better be ready. I said you better be ready. And I'm not ready to fight now. You know, I'm going to wait. Uh, every day you wait for things to happen, you might have lost the battle. That's why some people prolong in fighting. Because they've waited and waited and waited. And that's exactly what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to wait. He doesn't want us to fight today. Because listen, remember how we started. Look up here. The Bible says, whosoever is born again, it's already overcome. That's how we started. So the devil knows that scripture that if you fight, you're going to win. You think if you don't fight today, it's okay. And he stays in the corner and he's laughing. Because that's exactly what he wants you to believe. Because God, which is the truth, says, where you have overcome because you are born again. So, this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. So, when you stand in faith to fight, the devil knows you are going to win. This is why you must fight the battle of faith. Faith is the only thing that commands the attention of God, not your cry. A prayer that is not faith is faithless. It's prayerless. It's hopeless. Faith is the key in the kingdom of God. And faith is the foundation. You born again by faith. You save by faith. You receive by faith. You know God by faith. Everything of God is faith. So, Bible faith is what confirms your dominion. I've said this many times. And I repeated it a lot of time in, in, in the month of March. In Ephesians 6, 12, we are not wrestling against human beings. Human beings are not your enemy. Your enemy is the forces of darkness that is, are behind people to do something. Because just like God needs human beings to operate, the devil also needs human beings to operate. Are you listening to me? So don't look at people and think they are your enemy. They are not your enemy. Your brother is not your enemy. Your sister is not your enemy. Your neighbor is not your enemy. Your father is not your enemy. Your sister, your, they are, we are not enemies. It's the devil that does something. To make that people do what they are doing. But if you know that, if you fight the battle, you will win. I said you will win. The Bible says we have a weapon. And our weapon is not carnal. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. It says the weapon of our warfare, they are not what? We have weapon. That's verse 4. Give me verse 4. We have weapon. And use the weapon. One of the weapons we've talked about last month is faith. Faith is a weapon. And you are guaranteed that when you use the weapon, you're going to win. Bible faith confers 
dominion. Bible faith does what? It confers dominion. In verse 3, it says, though we, we are in the flesh, though we are physical beings, we are not to fight in the flesh. Don't fight with your mind. Don't fight the way, the way you think. You know, the way I'm seeing it, that's the way probably he's thinking that I'm doing. Don't fight like that. That's what the devil wants you to fight, to believe. He wants you to believe the wrong thing so that he can continue winning. And most of us believe the wrong thing because we fail to abide with the word of God. You are in the flesh. Don't fight in the flesh. Don't fight in the flesh. Don't let your feeling dictate to you. Don't let what it does dictate to you. You have a weapon. And in verse 4, he said that weapon is not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Every stronghold is pulled down by this weapon of faith. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Now listen to me. You can be a Christian and want to live above and victoriously always. But you must understand that you have a guy called the devil whom the Bible says he is going around every single day looking for how to throw you down. He says, be vigilant. Sober. Don't be too exorbitant. and He's not telling you to go and drink whiskey. Be sober. Just be in a state where you are not overwhelmed and you are not, you know, you, you look at things with a clear mind. Be vigilant. He says, because your enemy, who is called the devil, he goes around like a lion and he's looking for a prey. He's looking for somebody to deceive. He's looking for somebody to destroy. He's looking for a career to, career to shatter. He's looking for you to say the wrong thing Capitalize on that thing and use it to capulate you. God forbid. He said, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. The enemy goes around and is seeking for whom to devour. That's why you can't just say whatever you want to say, however you want to say it. That's why you can't just say whatever goes in your mind. You know, I, I, I will give you a piece of my mind. You're on the way to destruction. Jesus could give Pontius Pilate a piece of his mind. But he didn't. He chose not to open his mouth. Don't always think you are right when you are giving a piece of your mind. A piece of your mind is wrong. A piece of his mind is right. Let his mind be in you. Even the mind of Christ. So we must understand that the battle of life, the guy we are fighting is more than seven, six, almost 7,000 years older than you. The guy you are fighting with is you are one he has 7, 000, 7 billion people in the world that he's dealing with. He's got massive experiences and history and account to hold on to, to say, okay, I did this in China. Let me take it over to Malta. I started this issue in, 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 in China. It's called Corona, Wuhan, or whatever that place is called, Wuhan, Wuhan village. Whatever that village is called. And then he took it out of there. He took it to Europe. And we, have, we heard yesterday how many 300 people died in Italy. And he said, okay, it's not enough. Let me move to Malta. Looking for whom to devour. Looking for whom to devour. We must be careful. And if you want, if you are careless, we have read Psalm 91, he that dwell in the secret place of the earth. It's not enough. But you must take it and take the word of God and, and make that word your, your shell. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. I'm not going on around and people are sneezing. <laughs> it shows you don't have faith. It shows when you talk about coronavirus, it shows you don't have faith. Put it aside. I have Jesus. Greater is he that is in me. Let your faith speak. Let your faith come out. And God will honor wherever he finds faith in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Don't discuss coronavirus in your house. Jesus is the prince in your house. He's the king in your house. Don't bring another devil in. Every sickness and disease is a devil. And if you are discussing devil on your table, Jesus and the devil is sharing the same table. 
Are you understanding where I'm coming from here? L the name of the Lord be glorified. And let every other thing shatter. At the mentioning of the name of Jesus, every other name will crumble. You, you know, faith is not, uh, I believe. And then you are talking nonsense about. Uh, you know, I believe. I believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They've just told us, you know, coronavirus. This coronavirus, I hope it will not. You know, and then you touch somebody. Give me water. Give me fluid. Give me. You are, fear has taken over your life. Are you listening to me? I said, are you listening to me? And the Bible says what you fear most will happen to you. Just do, just do what you need to do by faith. By faith. By faith, you will inherit your possession in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So until faith is fed and built, you may not stand the test of life. How do I build my faith? Number one, faith grows by hearing and understanding. Everybody say hearing. Everybody say understanding. Go back to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. The first hearing is you hearing about the word of God. The second hearing is you understand it. Until you understand a thing, you cannot be a master of that thing. Knowledge is power. Anybody have heard that? Knowledge without understanding will destroy you. I know I can drive. If I put the key of the ign ignition into the ignition and I drive, but I don't understand that I must drive on this side of the road, I will kill somebody. Knowledge is power, but knowledge without understanding will destroy you. Faith comes by hearing, mm. but faith works by understanding. You hear the word, but you understand it. You know the story of a man in Acts of the Apostle, chapter 8, verse 30 to 31. And, uh, you know, this man was uh, the Ethiopian, you know, the first person that brought the gospel to Africa. And then he was talking and he was reading the Bible. The Bible said he was reading Isaiah. And then he couldn't understand. And then God said to Philip, go and check, ask him if you understand. Philip got there and said, do you understand what you are reading? He said, no. How can I understand unless somebody tell, showed me? And Philip showed him. Then he went. Now, Philip did not tell him you need to baptize. Philip just explained Christ to him. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And the man said, wait a minute. Ah, now I understand. This is water. Can I baptize now? And then he got baptized. And immediately as soon as he baptized, the Bible said the Holy Spirit whisked Philip away. And that's how the gospel of moved to Africa. He could have read that scripture. He said, who is this man that you, we are talking about? He was... The chariot, the driver, or whatever, the, the plane who was flying him to Africa was crossing the water. But God did not want him to go back to Africa with knowledge. He wants him to go back to Africa with understanding. So he said, so faith comes by hearing knowledge and with understanding. So until you understand the scripture, you might not be able to manifest faith the way you should manifest it. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. The Bible said, desire to be filled with knowledge. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. Desire to be filled with knowledge. It says, because of this day, uh, I do not cease to pray for you. To desire to be filled with knowledge. And his will in all wisdom. What's the last one? And spiritual understanding. You can know how much you know about scripture, but do you understand it? I said, do you understand? That is, that is what God is asking us. So it's very important. Number two, faith grows by meditating on the word. Today, I'm going to speak on these two. Comes by hearing and understanding and comes by meditating on the word. I think I have two or three minutes to go and I'm just going to, I want you to listen to this. Faith works 
But you've got to understand how faith works. You've got to build your faith. We'll talk about that on Wednesday. And then you've got to then, it works also on the wheel of meditation. I'm not talking of meditation yoga. I'm talking of meditating on the, on the word of God. I'm not talking of abstract meditation. I'm talking of you picking the word of God concerning a thing, an issue in your life, and you take it and you chew it and you mute over it and you meditate. You think it while you are eating. You think it while you are showering. You think it while you are bathing. You think it while you are driving. You think you meditate. The word meditation means you mute over it. You consider it. You think and think and think about that same word. That's how you grow your faith. That's how you grow your faith. In Psalm 119, verse 97 and 90, say how, Psalm 119, verse 97 and 98. How I love your word. It is my meditation all day long. Hello? Psalm 119, verse 97, please. How I love your law, your word. It is my meditation all the day long. Not sometimes. You want faith to grow. Pick up the word concerning that issue that is challenging you. Pick it up. And meditate on it all the day. That's God's word. Uh, you know, this issue is bothering me now, but I know God can supply all my needs. Then you go on three hours doing something else and uh, no, I meditate. God can supply my needs. And then I now stick with that. In every circumstances all the day, that is what is ringing in my mind. God will supply all my needs. God will supply all my needs. Then when you begin to meditate on that, things will come that will make you don't see God supplying your need. That's when the meditation kicks in again. That's when the meditation kicks. That's how you build faith. That's how you build faith. Are you listening to me? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He says, if you want to be successful, meditate on this word and you'll be successful. Meditate and you will be successful. Meditation is not just thinking. Meditation is taking the word, taking a word or some words and chewing it. Chewing it. Some of us spend time listening to Bay Radio, Bay News, CNN, all the, all the networks. Some of us will spend three hours a day on our social media, and we meditate everything else. And not the word of God. And then when we, when we think when we just need the faith, we just go, faith comes. Come, come. No, it doesn't, it doesn't come that way. Let me close with this. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. There are eight things that God tells us to meditate on here. Any, listen to me, listen. I'm going to close now. Anything else in the world, he says, don't think of them. God says, I only give you, please look at me. I only give you eight things in your entire life to think of. Number one, whatever is what? True. Don't think of anything negative. Number two, Whatever is honest, that's the only thing you think of. Number three, whatever is just. Number four, only pure things you should think about. Number five, whatever looks lovely. Anyone want lovely things in their life? Now, is, do you think only on lovely things in your life? Number five, always think of what is good. Is Corona good report? Don't think about it. Pray for them. Pray for yourself. But don't think about it. All this, he didn't say pray. Think. Meditate. Number six. Number seven, rather. Think of anything that has virtue. And number, number eight. Anything that has, is full of praise. God says these are the things I want you to think of. Everything in life, listen to me now, everything in life 
Everything in life is based on these eight things. Everything, everything in life is based on these eight things. I'm going to stop here. For those of you watching us online, thank you for connecting with us. And for those of you watching us on TV, it's Pastor Jide Overcomer's voice, bringing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ directly onto the comfort of your home. Join us, like us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, subscribe, and uh, let us know what you, uh, what, let us know um, whenever you're coming. Give us a call, the number on the screen, I believe. And then let us know if you have any questions. I'll be delighted to meet you in person. But until we meet next week, may the Lord bless you. Let's close our eyes in prayer.